Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin and this is the Sugar MD channel, the Ultimate Diabetes channel. Today we are talking about psyllium, psyllium husk. So, one of our watchers, followers, asked a question and his name is James B. And he says, thanks for the information. Since watching your channel and following your tips, my A1C levels have gone down. I have a co-worker that is trying to suggest I take psyllium husk with my meals. She says it will help with blood sugar. Is it true and any recommendation on the amount one should take daily? How little is too little to be beneficial and how much is too much to be harmful? Not looking for a prescription but a ballpark. What can I find on Google is pretty vague. Thanks. All right, I think that's a very good question. So, James, here's your answer. Psyllium has actually is very good for diabetes, number one. And I'll tell you the evidence behind it and how strong is the evidence. We'll get to that. But I'm going to summarize a few things. And I don't I don't want you to jump to the conclusion. So be patient. The video is not going to be too long, I promise. But sometimes knowing a little is worse than knowing nothing. So try to understand the whole thing. It's not going to take too much, believe me. So there's some data that says that it helps with the um, diabetes, data that it can help with cholesterol. And then I'll explain to you how it does. And also there is data that says that it helps primarily the constipation, right? Constipation and diarrhea. Well, which one do you hate most? Everybody is different. I hate diarrhea more than the constipation. And I tend to have occasional diarrhea, especially when I don't eat right. So I'm going to tell you, buddy. Mm. When you eat sweets and some bad food, especially when you eat outside, that can cause some diarrhea. My body rejects it, I'm telling you. So, but if you are having constipation, psyllium definitely helps. Interestingly, it helps with diarrhea too. And here's why. Now, psyllium is a... Basically a fiber, right? It's 70% uh, soluble fiber and 30% is insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber basically attracts the water in your intestinal system. It starts collecting water in the small intestine and then it carries that to your colon. And then it creates uh, this bulk reaction because it attracts the water. And the bulk stimulates the peristalsis in your colon. So as a result, it makes you just push whatever's in there all the junk that is in there. So there's some chelation feature because it can, it's, it's basically like a, uh, like a glue, you know, it will just also pick up stuff that's not good for you, not just water. It also actually picks up the sugar as well. So sugar gets attached to it or gets sucked into it and then it's not absorbed as quickly, okay? So, so as a result, your blood sugar is not going to spike as fast. So that's the basic promise of any fiber. That's why we always emphasize the plant-based diets because plants have a lot of fiber. Uh, like we have eggplant video, for example, one of my favorite fruit, <laughs> not a vegetable. But uh, a lot of fruits and vegetables, guys, have a lot of fibers. So that's why we emphasize eating those a lot because those will uh, reduce or dampen the spike of the blood sugars that comes in the diet. Uh, and of course, the more fiber you eat, the longer you will feel fuller and you're not going to feel like you're, you need to uh, snack. Again, what drives the hunger a lot of times is you're eating carbs, especially simple carbs and pastry and all this junk and it spikes your insulin and your blood sugar, your blood sugar starts dropping because your insulin spikes or, or you end up taking insulin if you're on insulin. And then your body realizes the blood sugar is dropping fast and then you feel the hunger. But if your blood sugar is going up slowly and coming down slowly, you don't get that hunger reaction. So as a result, fiber, wherever it comes from, is extremely helpful. Now, soluble fibers are also very helpful, especially the one in lentil. We have a video about the lentils as well. You can check that out. But the soluble fibers are also good for your cholesterol as well. So what soluble fiber part of does, actually, it binds the bile acid. So if you know a little bit about bile acids, they're actually made from cholesterol. And there is what we call enterohepatic circulation of cholesterol. So basically, your cholesterol... Uh, is made in the liver, it is sent to the bile in your gallbladder. When you eat food, it is sent in for digestion of the fat especially, and it had to help absorb the vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins, and that, that bile is reabsorbed to the liver, 
and so that your liver can use it again. You know, our body is very efficient. We don't want to waste things. Of course, some of the bile is wasted, and then bacteria change the color of the bile, and that's what gives you the color of the poop, okay? So if you don't know, just in case. <laughs> so, but bile acids are reabsorbed. Now, fiber, soluble fiber, and, and psyllium husk also, basically binds that bile. As a result, it's not reabsorbed. So if there is not bile coming back to liver, we'll, liver will be like, well, the bile didn't come back. Anybody? Where, where's, the, where's the bile? I need bile. Well, your liver is not going to scream it like people do to each other. Okay. So liver will say, okay, well, you know, I'll just pick up some cholesterol from the blood. And then your LDL will be picked up from your blood to make the bile. And everybody is at peace. Your cholesterol goes down. Your liver is happy. Your body is happy. Everybody is happy. So fiber as a result is very good, especially soluble fiber. So psyllium husk has soluble fiber and insoluble fiber that helps both the gastrointestinal movement, but also cholesterol. And as we discussed, preventing the blood sugar spikes as well. Now the next question is how much to take? Well, that depends on how much fiber you eat. So if you are eating salad every day and you're trying to have all this, you know, plant-based foods in your diet, you probably will not need as much psyllium husk. But if you are a steak and potato kind of person and you don't think that even Jesus comes back is not going to change your mind, well, um, then in this case, you probably need some psyllium husk. <laughs> Uh, because you need fiber, dude. So if you cannot eat fiber, if you ha have this uh, aversion against good food, then you will need some sort of supplement. And I think in that case, psyllium husk will be really helpful. And if you are having, as I said, diarrhea or constipation, although you're eating well, maybe you need more fiber. So everybody's needs are a little different. So the typical recommendation for psyllium is like five grams, you know, per meal. Now, why five grams? Because it's typically recommended to have 25 to 30 grams of fiber in your diet at least every day. And in America, uh, I don't know other countries as much, but uh, in America, people don't even get near that some, half the time. Well, most of the time. So in that case, you know, if you're a fast food eater and you're not big into salads and vegetables, you probably need to take that thing pretty much every meal, 5 to 10 grams every meal to kind of get your, get your soluble fiber going. Uh, now, another problem with uh, going such a high dose is if your body is not used to fiber, you are going to get bloated body. That's a side effect. So if you start, uh, you know, like anything, okay, so any supplement, any new food group, whatever, even lentils, like if you're not used to lentils, you start eating lentils, you're going to be farting all day. I'm telling you, just get used to it. Tell your family that you're getting into a new venture and they need to put that with you. Or just start small, uh, slow, and uh, you know, build up. Like anything else in life, right? Start slow and gradually go up. I mean, uh, right now, thank God, we have like around 80,000 subscribers. We didn't start with that. We start with one subscriber, that was me. So, <laughs> but then, you know, you start slow, you increase your pace, you try, you, you become dedicated, you kind of, you know, spend time, and then you get to where you wanna get to, you know? And uh, we, I'm glad that we, more than a million people are clicking on our videos today, and that's amazing. I'm so happy that I'm helping so many people. I hope this video is helpful for you as well. So, but the bottom line is, you start slow and gradually build. So you can start with once a day and see how your bowel takes it. You know, if you feel like, oh, it's kind of helping or or at least there's no side effects like too much bloating or gas, then you can try to increase that after maybe a few days and try to take twice a day and then maybe try to increase it to three times a day. Depending on the benefit you're getting and the, and the lack of side effects uh, is going to help you to uh, increase your intake. Now, what are the serious side effects? Sometimes people get allergies to that. You know, some people who are sensitive to this kind of stuff uh, will probably have some runny nose or some uh, teary eyes whatever that has been reported and then like i said the bloating is going to be your major problem but otherwise psyllium is pretty much a very natural uh, fiber uh, that comes from a plant that is produced in india and mediterranean region uh, so overall a very healthy addition to your diet if you have to so i hope that video helps you guys and if it does remember to subscribe to Leave a comment and like and share. Thank you guys. We'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you for watching. And I want you to be more informed and more educated. So to do that, 
go ahead and watch this next video right here.